Hello everyone, this is Tushita Gupta, ACC affiliate, and we are resuming with the PM revision. This is chapter three, information systems and data analytics. Let's get started. So uh, if you go down the memory lane a little bit, if you have studied the BD paper that is. So in the BD paper, we have already learned that when it comes to strategic, so uh, let's try to understand it this way, even for the people who have probably got exemptions in BT and MA, so it's for all of those people also to like uh, get the concepts from the scratch. So basically, when we talk about the management of a company, so the management will always be found in three tiers. So the first tier will be the top level management, which are the C-level employees, the CEOs, CFOs, CMOs, uh, the chief, chief executive, chief marketing officer, chief financial officer, and all of these people. Then will come the middle level management. These will basically be the smaller level heads, which are, uh, you know, getting the work done with the lower level of employees. And then the last level will be the day to day, uh, you know, uh, this is also called as the operational level. So they, uh, they do the day to day works. Uh, you know, for running the company. So this is the operational level. So now when we are uh, talking about these three levels of the management, so basically the kind of work that they do also differs. So basically when it comes to the, you know, the devising of strategy, strategy is something that the top level takes care of. So the strategic planning lies in the hands of the top level of the management and then uh, your middle level management will do basically management control or what you call as tactical planning management uh, control or what you can call tactical planning so tactical how tactfully you have to you know get the work done with the operational level people and now uh, you know, the people who are implementing the day to day plans of the organizations. So basically, they will be doing the operational control. So according to now in this chapter, we are discussing information systems and data analytics. So basically, we are going to see how uh, you know, the information systems needed by the people at different levels of management also differ. So basically, the information that probably the top level management will need for strategic planning will involve long term forecasts because when we talk about strategy strategy is something which is going to be our long term approach to doing things so strategy for the top level of management the you know the strategic planning which is done by the top level of management will need long term forecasts so this is how the information that they need will be uh, different with uh, the different levels of management. Now, if we talk about the middle level of management, so this middle level of management will basically uh, middle level of management. Now, they are the ones who are responsible to get the work done from the people who are at the bottom level. So, these people are going to need information like capacity utilization, for example, if we have 100 employees, how many hours are they working? Are they wasting any time? Are they taking too many offs in a month? So capacity utilization. Another thing that they will need is the labor statistics that, you know, uh, how much of them are male, how much of them are female, how much of them are uh, working for how many hours of the day, how many of them are part-time, uh, part how many of them are full-time with the company. So this is the information that they are going to need. And now if we talk about the operational level, so basically these are the people who are doing works on day to day basis. So the information that they need will be more detailed and will be more short term. And you can also call this as a transactional data because this is something which is going on on the day to day basis. So they are going to need more detailed and short term information. If I have to do something today, I will need to know today and uh, you know what's going to happen in five years according to the long term forecast is of no use to me because I'm doing the work today right here right now. I'm at the operational level. So this is how the needs of information of people working at different levels in the organization will vary. Now we discuss uh, the different types of systems, the processing systems, information systems that are there and uh, which level are they uh, used at and what are the basically functions of those systems. So the first system that we learn about 
is going to be the transaction processing system TPS transaction processing system this is TPS in short so basically let's try to first understand uh, what it basically is and then we will be in a better position to identify which sort of uh, which level of management is this processing system used by so basically transaction processing system will record historic information and basically it's like a simple automation of your manual systems so it will on a routine basis on a routine basis, it's going to capture, process, store, and output the output the transactions. So as the name suggests, it's a transactions processing system. So it's going to number one, capture the transaction as soon as it happens. It's going to note it down that this has happened. It's going to process. So probably if there's a sale, uh, cash is going to get added. Sales are going to be credited. So it's going to process that uh, you know transaction it's going to store that transaction for anyone to view later on and it's also going to output the transaction if someone generates a sales report it's going to show those sales over there so it's a transaction processing system it is very important the the, the transaction system is very important because if there's a wrong entry in this system it will affect each and every report that has been produced using this software or using this system so uh, like i said it's something which is recording the transactions on a routine basis so it is the operational level who is doing the routine tasks who is doing the day-to-day -day implementation of the things so that is why the transaction processing system is going to be useful to my operational level employees so this is what i will remember about the tps system first of all that it is capturing processing storing and outputting the transactions on a routine basis and hence it is useful to my operational level employees now let's learn about the second uh, system that we have in our syllabus which is management information systems or mis management information system or you can also call it in short as MIS. So again, let's understand what it is for. So basically, it is converting all of your internal and external data into useful information. So perhaps uh, the internal information is about the sales, is about the costs of my own company. So this is my company. And probably these are my competitors. This is my competitor one. This is competitor two. And let's suppose I have multiple competitors. So or for all of the competitors, uh, all of their information, which might not be, uh, you know, all of the information which is publicly available, not all information will be publicly available. There will be some confidential information also. But my management information system will convert all of my internal and external data into useful information which will help the managers at all levels across all functions to be able to make uh, to be able to you know enable them to take timely and effective decisions for planning controlling and directing so they will be doing three things they will be planning the managers plan they control and they direct so controlling directing so basically the use of the mis is to collate is to uh, you know get together the external and internal data convert that into useful information which will help my managers to uh, to plan to control and to direct the employees so the employees get into real uh, connect with the uh, second level of the management which is the middle level so hence this mis is useful to my tactical or my middle level managers tactical level or middle level managers now this is all i need to learn about management information systems now moving on to the third system the third system that we talk about is our executive information systems information systems and this is eis now 
this system uh, as the name would suggest would executives are you know my top level employees so these are my strategic level of management that is where the software is used now let's understand what the software actually does so basically it will provide you a flexible access to the information from the entire business so everything which my transaction processing has collected everything which my management information system has uh, collected all of that information will be provided in one place so all everything about my internal business and everything external to the business will be combined in one software and I will be able to flexibly access that over this system which is the executive information system. So basically it's a flexible access of internal business information as well as relevant information from the external environment. Like I explained in uh, the characteristics of good information, so the information has also to be relevant to me. If it is not relevant, it's not useful to me. So external environment, information from the external environment should also be relevant. Only the relevant information will be provided to me by the executive information system. So this is all that we learn about the executive information system. Now the next thing that we talk about is our expert systems. So the fourth point that we have over here is expert systems. <clears throat> so expert systems are those systems which can be used at any level of the management and they hold specialist knowledge. So for example, there's something about taxation. So probably uh, I am working in the billing department and I need to know how much tax is going to be applied on which sort of product. So uh, this expert system will be helping me to determine uh, the laws about taxation. So e expert systems can also be about law that, you know, uh, which sort of law is applicable to which customer that I'm catering to. So these are ex expert systems and these can be used at all levels, can be used at all levels. So this is what we know about the expert systems. Now the next sort of system that we learn about is a DSS, which is a decision support system. So this, uh, these systems are the ones which provide you support for semi-structured or unstructured decision making. So perhaps you have not been able to arrive at a Con, uh, you know, at a concrete decision, you are still in the thinking process. So these decision support systems will provide you with the information gap that you have, the information that you need in order to be able to take a structured decision. So these will provide you a support, support for semi-structured decisions. Hence the name that these are decision support systems. So this is what we learn about DSS. Now the next software that we learn about is our enterprise resource planning system, which is called ERPS. So it stands for enterprise resource planning systems. So these are the systems which integrate all data from all operations within the organizations. So probably an ERPS will be something which this is one system and I have different systems for different functions. This is for finance, this is for marketing, this is for accounting. So all of the systems that I have in my business, information from all of these systems will be accumulated into the ERPS. This is a function of ERPS that it integrates data from all the operations of the business within the organization. So everything that my finance department is doing, anything that my marketing department is doing, anything which my accounting department has done will all be visible in the ERPS. PS. Then the last type of system that we talk about in this chapter is going to be a CRM system which stands for customer relationship management. So these systems are the ones which processes a, a company is using to track and organize its contracts with even its current and prospective customers. So like the name suggests customer relationship management, it will help you to track what your current customers are buying and also what your prospective customers, maybe you are putting out ads 
in the market and uh, how much number of people are clicking on your ads how much interest are they showing in your uh, products that you're manufacturing so these are your prospective customers so a crm will help a company to track and organize uh, the relationship the contact that it maintains with the existing as well as its prospective customers so this is all that we learn about the systems that there are in a uh, you know that the organizations can actually use now uh, you know when it comes to such organizations uh, it, there there also is a problem that the data that they are able to generate in a day is a lot uh, the data is in such a big quantity that processing that data becomes difficult and when the data is big it is called big data as simple as that when the data is too big to process it's called big data and we also have the characteristics of big data in our syllabus so the first thing that we learn about big data is the velocity so if you are a very big company there are going to be transactions happening at every moment you are making sales you are purchasing raw materials you are paying off your employees there's hr there's payroll so the velocity of transactions is very high that uh, at any given point of time there are multiple transactions happening in your business so that means there's a velocity that the transactions are happening at a very high speed then there's a volume of transactions so volume basically means that there's a, a lot of transactions that are happening so velocity is the speed and volume is the magnitude of transactions that are happening then like i told there's also going to be a variety so variety means a, a transaction happening in the marketing department a transaction happening in the sales department a transaction happening in the pr uh, production department so there can also be a variety in the number of transactions in the transactions that you have now another thing that you can also have as a feature of big data is the veracity uh, my apologies veracity so veracity is nothing but when you are having so many number of transactions there's also a risk that there will be inaccuracies so whenever there's so much of data being collected it is also possible that you are collecting wrong data so veracity will essentially talk about the increased risk of inaccuracies so since the data accuracies so since the data that you are uh, capturing is uh, you know having all of these features there's velocity there's volume there's variety so there's also ver veracity that you know the there is always an increased risk of inaccuracies so uh, this is the fourth feature then the next feature that we talk about is the value so the big data also brings you value the you know processing big data can help you to uh, obtain value from it it can help you to get to know important information which can help your business to improve the sales to improve the profits so these are basically the five characteristics of big data now when it comes to uh, the next topic we talk about the benefits of big data so while using big data what are the benefits that i can possibly get out of it so first of all i can drive innovation driving innovation by reducing time taken to answer key business questions so basically if there are some uh, questions which are related to your business if you have the big data with you you can process that data and using that you can reduce the time that you are taking to solve the basic queries and you can drive innovation with that so uh, now that you you are able to have those answers faster you will be able to bring more more innovation in the way you do your work so another benefit that you have is enabling large quantity of data so large quantity of data that is examined quickly so basically if you have these uh, processing of big data in your uh, system you are doing this then a lot of data you can process and examine quickly this will help you to make better decisions so the third point is again which i let uh, 
which you know led to the discussion from the second point improving quality of decision making so improving quality of decision making again this is self explanatory that since uh, i am able to maintain my data well i am able to process examine that quickly i am also improving the quality of decisions that i make at the organization another advantage is that it can also enable cost reduction now that i am processing my data i know which are the features of the products that my customers like the most which features are unnecessary or which can be removed which the customers do not really want so i can also reduce my costs then another benefit that i can arise is gaining a competitive advantage gaining competitive advantage so basically if i am using big data to my advantage my uh, my you know competitors are not doing so i am the one who is you know using this data to derive insights that okay uh, if this is the case then this is something that i can do probably uh, think of an example where i am studying my data my customers are currently happy with the products but the products that i'm offering maybe there's some one more feature which if i add then i can make double the revenue that i am generating so if i am using big data to study these things i will add that feature my competitors may or may not add that and then i will gain a competitive advantage because i have added that one feature which will drive more customers to buy my product now another benefit that we talk about uh, big data is improving productivity so now that i have an easier access to the big data that is being generated so that means that the productivity that i can also get from my employees is something which can be improved so these are basically the benefits of uh, using big data now whenever there come benefits there will also be risks uh, you know associated to so let's talk about the risks associated with big data so whenever we are using big data there will also be some problems that we can face so one of the problems is that availability of skills so even though the big data is becoming popular these days not a lot of people have the skills to analyze the big data another disadvantage that we can think about is the security of data so you know when uh, we are inputting all of our debit credit card details the companies are also storing that data with that so if i am using my credit card to make a payment on some website maybe amazon so amazon is saving my data so security of my so my my card number is something which is private and confidential to me so uh, i might be you know questioning amazon that why are you saving my data because you know uh, maybe if your uh, if there's a security breach at your company my data will also be leaked and i will suffer so this is another risk which is associated with big data and then again similar to this is data protection that if the company is uh, you know storing my data it also has the duty the responsibility to protect my data from being stolen because if the data gets stolen i may face losses so this is the risks that we associate with big data now let's talk about big data management now how you know basically the process that we used to manage the big data will be called as big data management so it is all about the storage management and control of big data management and control of big data so when i say big data management i will be talking about three things storage management and control of big data then let's talk about big data analytics so basically data analytics has been a thing which has been grabbing the attention of a lot of people these days there are specific courses that are being launched about data analytics so let's understand what data analytics is so basically it's a process in which you scrutinize in which you examine the big data in order to identify patterns correlations and relationships so basically uh, you know big data analytics maybe you have found out that people living in area a 
and people living in area B. So your business is serving two kinds of people. So maybe using the big data, you have found out that people living in area B, uh, uh, people living in area A are more, uh, are purchasing your products even more. So if you're thinking of uh, probably launching more products or having more stores, you will uh, open those stores in the localities of area A because that is where people are buying your products more. So this is how big data analytics can uh, you know, identify and establish relationships, patterns and correlations. And this is how uh, analytics can help also your business. So uh, then we talk about the big data sources. Big data sources. Like, you know, what are the sources through which we can uh, generate or you, you can process big data. So basically a software which has been mentioned in your book is Hadoop. Hadoop is a software which helps, which enables the processing of large sets of data. So this is what we learn about the, uh, you know, uh, how we can analyze, how we can process the big data. Now, uh, if we talk about, you know, from where we started, the first thing that we learned was that, first of all, the raw unprocessed facts and figures are called data. And if data is processed, it becomes information. So information uh, is something when your data has been processed to make some sense out of the raw facts and figures, it becomes information. Then the next thing, if you process information even further, the next thing that you obtain is knowledge. When you are putting together important information, assembling that, you gain knowledge. And if you assemble knowledge even further, you gain wisdom. So basically, this is like a hierarchy of uh, information. So the raw, bare, unprocessed facts and figures are data. Then processing that, you get information. Then a further step ahead is knowledge. And the last step is wisdom. So now wisdom is basically over there to add value. It is like an expert system. So wisdom will add value. And this will be an expert system because, you know, uh, wisdom will be earned through even further processing the knowledge so you have gained the knowledge of let's suppose taxation accountancy and uh, legal uh, things so then once that becomes into wisdom you will be able to add value and then this becomes an expert system which people at all levels of the organization will be able to refer then when we talk about information so information will basically be revealing the relationships so revealing relationships because once we process uh, the data and it becomes into information uh, then it also reveals relationships that how different things are linked together so again this becomes an MIS which is a management information system then if we talk about knowledge so knowledge is something which will provide you insights provide you insights so this will be more like a decision support system. If you get, uh, you know, you are not able to take a decision properly, you get more information about whether you should do or not do that thing. So that provides you insights and that will be done by a DSS. Now, if we talk about data, so data will basically be, you know, making measurements because that's like bare, unprocessed uh, facts and figures. So these will be more or less in the form of measurements. And this will be done in a TPS, which is a transaction processing system. Data is processed in a TPS, which ultimately it converts into information. So this is what we have so far. And uh, coming, we are closely uh, inching towards the end of this chapter. So the last two things that we, last two or, things, uh, two or three things that we have to learn over here. First of all, we have data mining. So when it comes to data mining, it is the process in which you identify trends and patterns in a large set of data. So perhaps uh, my big data Hadoop software has accumulated a lot, a lot of data. So in the process of data mining, what it will do is that it will identify trends and patterns in the large set of data that I have accumulated. Then there's also a trend which is going on in the sense of predictive analysis. 
so basically studying this uh, you know big data uh, there will be like uh, you know the predictive analytics is a tool which will help businesses to get valuable insights based on the data that they have collected so it will try to predict what the future customers will demand so it it sees how the past trends have been and using those trends it will try to as the name suggests it will try to predict what the future customers are going to demand so this is what predictive analytics uh, is doing and it's getting a lot of uh, you know uh, it's uh, going viral by the day so then the last thing that we talk about is the skepticism so because in every place where we are trying to learn and move ahead with the technology there will also be skepticism because you know you cannot blindly rely on the predictions which the predictive analytics is going to make uh, with absolute certainty that's definitely there because the predictions that it makes are also based on historical data and it may not always be the case that you know the future is going to be based on the past so that is why skepticism is where we are not relying on predictions uh, for like providing us absolute certainty we are also trying to use some of our own brains we are skepticism we we are exercising skepticism we are skeptic when it comes to using the information which the predictive analytics is providing us so with this we have come to an end to chapter number 3 uh, please stay tuned for the further videos in which we will be revising even more chapters i hope that this was useful